Uh, my name is Florian Westphal. I am a kernel developer at Red Hat, I'm doing mainly work on the networking stack and mainly NetFilter. Um, I will give a talk about the recently added SKB metadata extensions. And if someone would give me the device to switch to the next slide, I would be very grateful. Thank you. So first I will give a short introduction and background on uh, what um, this talk will be partly about. Then um, some motivation for this work. Then I will explain how the implementation is looking like and why it was uh, done this way. And last, I will give um, a short overview over possible alternatives in case you have a use case where the extensions can't be used or don't really make sense. So first of all, SKBuff is the main data structure in the, in the Linux network stack. And if you take a look at the networking stack in Linux, um, you will see this SKBuff struct everywhere. Um, its purpose is to associate the raw data that uh, comes in from a network device or that will be uh, sent out to the network with the data about the data. For instance, um, it contains the device on which the packet arrived on, it uh, contains the socket uh, the packet is associated with, uh, it has pointers to the network uh, offsets, to the transport offsets and so on that get filled in as the packet is parsed in the network stack. And there's also uh, a timestamp when the packet arrived, um, a checksum, a packet hash, and so on and so on and so on. And it's uh, very, very hard to make changes to the structure because as soon as you make large changes in the struct, even just adding a pointer somewhere, it al almost always has a performance implication because the structure is used everywhere and the struct size and the layout uh, have a have immediate effect because of access patterns. So for instance, if you have a code parse that's a, that is executed per packet uh, 10 million times per second or something like that, and you, you, uh, your change causes um, some data to be split across a cache line, then this can, can make a huge difference. Um, the other reason is that whenever we have to allocate the structure, we need to initialize most of it. So every uh, cache line, and it's four cache lines in total on most architectures, will be touched. Um, the structure is fairly large. It's something like 224 bytes. Um, so this problem has come up before. How do I associate some extra data with the SK buff without adding something uh, to it for my special use case? And if you go back in time into, uh, into 2002, uh, the patches that implemented the initial versions for IPsec engine and for the bridge net filter were merged. And they both pretty much at the same time solved this problem in pretty much exactly the same way. So they both added a, a private pointer to the SK buff that gets um, uh, allocated for a private structure. And then they place whatever information they need to store there um, in that extra struct that hangs off the SK buff master structure. In the case of IPsec, that's information like uh, what the uh, encryption algorithms are and so on and so forth. And for bridge net builder, it has to store on which bridge port the packet arrived and in case there is some mangling going on, it, it stores the original MAC addresses and so on. And they are pretty much exactly the same. They are both only allocated on demand that is if the packet is IPsec or if it's traveling through bridge net filter and not at allocation time. So aside from the increase in the SK buff structure for the two pointers, anyone who doesn't use IPsec or bridge net filter won't have to pay any of the extra costs. Um, both are reference counted, which means that if in case the SKB is cloned because it has to be kept on an additional queue, for instance, because some TCP dump is running, then the data is not copied, it's just reference, uh, reference counted. And there are provisions on uh, when uh, users can say that uh, they need exclusive access when there is a copy on write. Um, to implement that properly, um, both hook into the code paths that deal with cloning and with freeing to maintain that. So in case the SK buff is freed and the last SK buff goes away, then the data will be uh, freed automatically. And um, unlike the existing other structures that hang off SK buff, such as the socket or the device, 
which are pointing to uh, data that is external. The device doesn't go away just because the packet is tweet, and likewise the socket. And that's the main difference. So these um, use cases for IPsec and bridge nested are basically exactly the same. So now it's 2018, and we have this thing called MPTCP. And MPTCP needs to store extra data in the SK buff. The solution that was originally chosen is to just increase the control buffer, which is the uh, logical place where you store such data, but um, uh, it had to be increased because we are already uh, out of space in the control buffer to put any more stuff in it without increasing the total structure size. So um, what they did was just to increase that. And the main use case for that is to store the DSS or data sequence signal map which maps the logical sequence numbers in MPTCP to the individual sequence numbers in the subflows. Because you have to maintain, uh, in MPTCP, you have multiple TCP streams that make up a logical connection. So if you have packets arriving, then you need to figure out which TCP packet comes into, into which order in the logical connection, because uh, the packets can go on any or one of the sub uh, TCP flows. And uh, because MPTCP would uh, like to uh, be upstreamed, so um, we need to find some alternative method to store this DSF, DSS map somewhere in the SK buff without uh, making a mess of the SK buff structure. So um, there were several alternative discussion, uh, dis uh, solutions discussed, so like adding a second control buffer at the end and adding another pointer of the SK buff like IPsec or bridge net filter. But, well, they are very much similar in the requirements to what we already have with IPsec and uh, the bridge net filter. So can we just replace that with a single unifying infrastructure? And that's exactly what the SKB extensions are about. So basically what I did is to take a look at all the two existing users and what requirements MPTCP has. And then I started to come up with something that uh, can handle all of them with a single pointer and just uh, implement whatever all of these similar use cases uh, need. So um, the main assumption is that um, no one is going to use the, the, these extensions for the normal cases like normal TCP, normal UDP workloads, and that the overhead will just be paid for IPsec, for bridge net filter, and for in the future MPTCP. Um, in case MPTCP, because it's not yet upstream, would find another solution that doesn't need these extensions, then all is good because we already were able to unify the two uh, existing use cases we have. So this is not just for MPTCP. Uh, it will be fine if uh, MPTCP can come up with a different solution. Um, the SKB extensions are a bit different because we only have one pointer instead of two for IPsec and bridge. We must be able to add all the extensions at the same time like we already can with the two different pointers, but now we just have one. So we need a way to identify which extensions are active and which uh, extensions are not active or if we don't have any extensions at all. And the way to do it, um, I added an enum that has the two existing users, namely bridge and, uh, um, and the net filter, uh, and the net, net filter uh, uh, bridge uh, infrastructure. And uh, there is a second new member in the SK buff. Uh, so we have one new pointer to store the dynamically allocated data. And we have a small uh, byte that will tell us as a bit mask which extension is active and which extensions is, uh, are, are cleared. So uh, the callers, they can just, uh, just check the uh, uh, active extensions byte to figure out if the extension is active or not. Um, one of the questions I had when I, uh, uh, I got asked when I upstreamed it originally was why I would not store that in the extension blob itself. And the reason for that is the copy and write scheme because we must be able to delete an extension at any given time but in case the reference count has been increased because there are several SKBs that ref refer to the same uh, extension structure, then we get a problem because we cannot just clear the bit in the extension, uh, in the extension stack because it's shared. So if we would toggle it off on one SKB, we would toggle it also off on all the clones that exist already. 
And that would mean that we have to uh, copy on write in the case of a disabling request. And Kamalo can fail on, under resource stress. And that's not a desirable behavior to have that um, it's not possible to disable an extension that is added at a later time. So I used an external um, additional, f uh, additional SKB field to solve that problem so I can just clear that bit in case uh, the um, extension is to be removed. Um, another upside is that the extension pointer can be kept uninitialized. So it's at the, la at the last part of the SKB. And uh, at that point, uh, it has an undefined state. So that means that if you um, allocate a new SK buff and you read the extension pointer, it can crash because, or dereference that extension pointer because its content is random. So all the callers first need to check the active extension byte if there is an extension. And only then is the pointer active. Why? Because that saves a bit of time uh, during the allocation because we don't have to clear out the last part of the SK buff. And one idea is uh, for the future to, to move, try and find out if we have additional fields in the SK buff that are not that important that we could move downwards where, the, where it's an undefined state. One target that uh, might be useful to look at is the, is the VLAN header, even if it's small. The extension structure looks like this. So you have a reference count, like an IPsec and bridge net filter, so it's, uh, uh, it's exactly the same. Then there's a small array that contains the offset to where the extension that will be added starts. Then there is a counter that tells us how much uh, of the extension space is in use. And then there's the data directly behind it. And uh, this is accessible via the new SKB extensions pointer. And to fetch an individual ex extension, uh, you can just uh, use one of the helpers that will essentially just uh, take the start of the extension pointer and then add the offset that is in the uh, array of the same name. When the first extension gets added, then we always allocate the full memory that is required for all extensions at once. So uh, the first extension that gets allocated gets placed first in memory. So um, at, the, uh, at the offset enum value, there will be the number one because it's always at the, at the top. This is a deliberate design decision because we can use a KMEM cache for the SKB extensions. So if you tell SLUB to not merge uh, uh, KMEM caches, then you will see in the PROC file system how, may, how much data is allocated for uh, SKB extensions. <coughs> and uh, the memory contents are undefined, so we, uh, so we don't pay any extra penalty for allocating a few extra bytes, that doesn't matter. And um, one other point is it's a bit easier. Uh, the initial implementation of this did use, in fact, dynamically allocated memory and did K realloc on demand. <laughs> But uh, because the total size is currently just 128 bytes, so it didn't make sense to add a lot of code that deals uh, with reallocate uh, extension or shrinking of the buffer. So I removed that part and um, used a fixed size uh, instead. It could be later changed, so if, if in the future this, be uh, this becomes a problem because the structures get too large, then we could just move back to a dynamically allocated scheme. It does not need that much changing. When does a new using this infrastructure make sense? So there are a couple of requirements that I think should uh, be considered before uh, making use of this. So one is the data should be related to the SKB packet aggregate, otherwise it does not make any sense. So for instance, um, to, uh, you, uh, you could move the device pointer to, uh, to an extension, but that makes no sense because you just, uh, you just um, add one extra dereference operation, it's a common case, and so on. Um, secondly, the data should be freed when the SKB is freed. So any resource that exists for, lang for longer than the SKB lifetime doesn't make sense. And um, it's very important is that it should not be in the normal case. So if you have a use case that is so important that it will be allocated for every packet in 
on every Linux box out there, then <laughs> using SKB extensions makes no sense because at, uh, as soon as that happens, then everyone will pay, the, pay the, an extra allocation penalty and we don't want that. And uh, if you, uh, your use case requires fancy actions on destruction like calling into kernel modules, then it's probably also not a good idea to use this because I would prefer to keep this very simple and not add any infrastructure for dynamic destructors and whatnot. There are a couple of alternatives. So um, what was discussed basically during the MPTCP, um, how, do, how do we solve our problem to store the sequence map? So one idea was to uh, store the extra data in the, uh, in the shared info block, uh, which hangs uh, at the end of the data buffer. And that's one way, but the problem is that it, it's unchanged on a, on a clone. So the shared, the it's applied in the name, it's a shared information. So whenever you clone something and one entity m would uh, make a change, then it becomes effective for every escape buff structure that references the same data. And that's, that's uh, for example, impossible to use for both IPsec and for the bridge net filter because for instance, the bridge will, cl will clone SKBs when it has to flood a packet out on several bridge ports. So that as soon as that, as that happens, um, you always uh, need extra storage for every SK buff and that's impossible with the, with the shared info block. So that's out of the question and the same applies to, uh, to possible other entities. Another idea was to, okay, if we should use the control buffer because that's what that it was designed for protocol specific data, but we can't increase it and we have large data, why not add a second control buffer at the end of the escape buff? That increases the structure size, but it would not be initialized by default. That is another possibility. The only downside is the structure size increase, but um, if you have a good use case that requires more data in the control buffer, then that could be a possible solution to propose upstream to add a second control buffer at the end that is never initialized by default. Uh, question, Florian. Yeah. It's not for me, it's from, it's from uh, Amrita. He's asking if, uh, when you say it should not be used for normal use case of TCP UDP, that, that's I think in one of your slides earlier, if you yeah. don't use it for TCP UDP. Um, how about tunnels? She has a use case where she wants to store metadata that's used in tunnels. Might make sense, yes. For it, tunnels, it, yes. it is reasonable? Uh, I mean, it's used for IPsec, and I think IPsec is, okay. is also a, a different enough. kind of tunnel, so yeah. I think that could be, could be done. Uh, another thing um, that should probably be avoided is to add ludicrous data size to the SKB extension structure. So uh, the current structure would theoretically support up to about two kilobytes of metadata, but I would prefer if we don't go crazy and start abusing this to store whatnot immediately. So please keep the size reasonable. Yeah, okay. Yep. I, I hope she had that. <laughs> um, where was I? Um, yeah, and uh, adding a second control buffer in, at the end would also not uh, impact any of the other uh, structure members that come before, so you don't have the problem that suddenly a hot pass has to access fields on different cache lines. And the third idea was to add a control block at the end of the struct uh, escape of F clones. This is a very nice idea uh, that Eric Dumase had. Uh, the, the clever thing here is that you don't even increase the SK buff size for incoming packets it, it's, uh, because the uh, uh, F clones are only used by TCP and other protocols for outgoing packets. The trick here is that basically as, uh, the SK buff F clone is a, is a structure that wraps two SK buff structures in, in, in it for TCP and other protocols that always have to clone SK buffs uh, on outgoing packets. So for instance, when TCP sends a, sends a packet, then it can't uh, free the packet uh, if it has been transmitted, it has to hold on to the packet until the uh, acknowledgement comes back from the other peer. So it has to store the SK buff on the uh, retransmit queue. And uh, that's solved by cloning the SK buff. Because an SKB clone is expensive because we ha would have to k malloc, 
it uses this F clone structure. So we basically always allocate two SK buffs at once. And then when the cloning request comes, we notice and this, uh, we just pretend we did an allocation and switch to the second um, SK buff that is inside this F, uh, F buff clone. And adding another control buffer there for outgoing packets would, uh, would uh, avoid a lot of problems. But um, as I mentioned, it's only available for outgoing packets because incoming packets use uh, a normal short SK, SK buffs at the moment. Any questions so far? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure I understood you correctly, but uh, if I understood you correctly, you are allocating the space for all possible extensions. Yes, always, that's correct. And yet you uh, allocate the space inside it dynamically according to which extensions are actually added to that particular uh, scheme, right? Yeah, yes, that's partially correct, yes. So uh, uh, a simpler uh, implementation would be to not have these offsets and uh, to just uh, open code the structures inside the extension structure instead of this opaque uh, data. That yeah, would be possible to do. What I wanted to ask. Yes. Um, the idea behind this is that uh, right now, if you, for instance, only use IPsec, then the memory layout and the memory costs of the... Uh, of the SEC pass, that's the uh, structure used by IPsec, are exactly the same as with the old uh, SK buff because of alignment and because of the extension head is, uh, is very small. So the reference count and the first parts of the SEC pass structure, if it's allocated as the only thing in the first one, will, will always be at the front because of this offset trick and not at the end. Or And, and uh, same is uh, for the net filter bridge infrastructure, if you only use net filter bridge infrastructure, then that data will also live at the top. Yeah, Does so that make sense? So it's mostly because of the... To memory, lo memory, memory locality, points. yes, memory locality. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Are, are you finished or...? Yes, I'm finished. Oh, okay, um, so um, if anyone else has questions, just find me in the hallway. Okay, uh, no, no, I, I, I have a question. Okay. No, yes? Am I getting my two bits that you stole from me? Of course. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> he, he, he stole two bits on the SKB from me. He, he, he removed them. So you're putting them back or I am putting them back? Uh, what do you want to put, put back? The, the, the bits that you took out on the SKB for, for TC. For TC? Oh, yeah. 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 I, th I think there's still some space. Oh, okay. <laughs> If if not, <laughs> if not, I have I have a collection of patches that that move even more uh, stuff around, but okay. uh, they are quite horrid and they don't help at all because it's just a few bits here and there. So right. maybe if maybe we can squeeze out a couple of bits here and there if you need them. Oh, you know why? That's now you're getting a gift for just exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.